Nuclear fusion is not the most understood energy source in the world, yet it could be one of the most useful in the next few years. When I found that out, I thought I'd take you down the rabbit hole of nuclear fusion as I explore the largest fusion reactor in the world. The world's largest nuclear fusion project. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor Project, or ITER, is a collaborative nuclear fusion project of 35 nations, aimed at reproducing the energy that fuels the sun by building the world's largest tokamak. What is tokamak? you ask? I'll tell you more about it later in the video, so stick around. Located in the south of France in a commune called saint paul les dorance the nuclear fusion research and engineering mega project is estimated to be worth $22 billion. Every day, thousands of scientists and engineers combine resources from 35 nations to tackle one of the most ambitious energy projects on Earth in one of the most diverse workplaces. But before diving deep into the ITER project, let's learn a bit more about nuclear fusion and how it differs from the standard nuclear power plants currently used to generate electricity in many countries. What is nuclear fusion? Nuclear fusion is a process where two light atomic nuclei combine to release energy. Not to be confused with nuclear fission, which is the process of splitting two heavy, unstable atomic nuclei into two lighter nuclei, releasing energy in the process as well. Nuclear fusion, unlike fission, releases more energy, making it a more powerful process. Perhaps the most important distinction between fusion and fission is that fusion does not create harmful radioactive byproducts that need to be stored for thousands of years. Currently, all nuclear power plants use the process of nuclear fission in order to generate electricity. As I mentioned, the process produces radioactive waste that must be safely stored over long periods. Fusion, on the other hand, produces the noble gas helium. Though it is yet to be achieved on a large scale, the process of nuclear fusion is a lot cleaner and way less messy. If ITER succeeds in achieving stable nuclear fusion, it will undoubtedly be one of the most significant scientific breakthroughs of the 21st century. Now, a fusion reaction works by forcing two light, extremely hot nuclei to merge and create a heavier nucleus. As the two fuse together, a lot of energy is released. That energy is then transferred as heat through a water loop system to produce steam that spins a turbine to generate electricity. Theoretically, the fusion process releases energy because the total mass of the resulting single nucleus is less than the mass of the two original nuclei. So all the leftover mass becomes the energy that is converted into electricity. Nuclear fusion is the same process that is going on in our sun right now, and it is the process that all stars in our universe universe used to generate heat, light, and energy. Scientists have understood the process of nuclear fusion for a long time, but so far they have only achieved to replicate the process in small experimental settings, and only for fractions of seconds. If they succeed in carrying out a nuclear fusion reaction that is self-sustaining, it is going to be humanity's solution for a long-term, sustainable, clean, safe, and carbon-free energy source. This is the aim of the ITER project, so you can see why billions of dollars have been poured into this project, making it one of the largest scientific scientific experiments on Earth. The Eta Tokamak but the question remains, how will ITER achieve this? Remember the tokamak? That's how. At the beginning of this video, I said I would tell you more about it later. So here it goes. The tokamak is a device used in nuclear fusion for the magnetic confinement of plasma and control of the fusion process. Actually, the term tokamak is a Russian acronym that stands for a toroidal chamber with magnetic coils, which is what it is in simple terms. A tokamak essentially is a chamber made out of a complex system of magnetic fields that confine the plasma of reactive charged particles as they try to fuse together in a hollow, torus, or donut-shaped container. Tokamaks have existed before, but ITER will be the world's largest tokamak, twice the size of the largest machine currently in operation. Scientists have been super ambitious with this, as they have increased the volume of the plasma chamber by a factor of 10 in comparison to the closest rival. This increased volume will allow the ITER tokamak to undertake constant, self-sustaining nuclear fusion, or at least that is the hope. But let us dive a little deeper into how a tokamak operates, and the engineering challenge challenge that faces ITA scientists. The Engineering Challenge the ITA tokamak is not a simple machine to build. The construction of this behemoth will include various subsystems like the cryostat, a device that will encapsulate the entire system and maintain the low cryogenic temperatures required for fusion to start. A magnet system will line the walls of the tokamak's internal chamber to control the plasma from the fusion reaction. Behind it will be a water-cooled blanket system to extract the heat produced from the reaction. A diverter system will be responsible for extracting the waste of the reaction, and finally the donut-shaped vacuum 
vessel where the fusion reaction will occur. So let's break down each of these subsystems of the tokamak and see the magnitude of engineering challenges facing ITER engineers. First, the ITER cryostat, with an internal volume of 16,000 cubic meters, is the largest high vacuum pressure chamber ever built. It provides a high vacuum, ultra cool environment for the ITER vacuum vessel and the superconducting magnets. Standing at 30 meters high and just as wide, the cryostat was manufactured from stainless steel. It weighs a total of 3,850 tons. Its base section alone weighs around 1,250 tons. The cryostat will be the single largest load of the ITER tokamak assembly. Next, the ITER magnet system will also be the largest and most integrated superconducting magnet system ever built. Superconducting magnets were chosen for this task as they were able to carry higher currents and produce stronger magnetic fields than conventional counterparts. They also consume less power and are cheaper to operate, making superconducting magnet technology the only option for ITER's huge magnet systems. In total, 10,000 tons of magnets with a combined stored magnetic energy of 51 gigajoules will produce the magnetic fields that will initiate, confine, shape, and control the ITER plasma. Then, the diverter system, which is situated at the bottom of the vacuum vessel. The diverter extracts heat and ash produced by the fusion reaction, minimizes plasma contamination, and protects the surrounding walls from thermal and neutronic loads. As the fusion reaction takes off, the high-energy plasma particles will strike the walls of the tokamak at incredible speeds. This kinetic energy will be transformed into heat energy, which will be removed from the system by active water cooling. The ITER's blanket system will be responsible for this. The blanket system, which covers a surface of 600 square meters, is one of the most critical and technically challenging components of the ITER tokamak. Together with the diverter, it directly faces the hot plasma of the fusion reaction. The 440 blanket modules that completely cover the inner walls of the vacuum vessel protect the steel structure and the superconducting toroidal field magnets from the heat and high energy neutrons produced by the fusion reaction. Each blanket module measures 1 by 1.5 meters and weighs up to 4.6 tons. ITER will be the first fusion device to operate with an actively water-cooled blanket. The cooling water injected at 4 megapascals of pressure and at a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius is designed to remove up to 736 megawatts of thermal power. All of these systems are designed to support the tokamak's main component, which is the vacuum vessel. This donut-shaped chamber is probably the most important component of the entire ITER assembly. This is where the particles will be forced to fuse together and generate a superheated plasma as a result. The ITER vacuum vessel's outer diameter will measure 19.4 meters across, 11.4 meters high, and weigh approximately 5,200 tons. With an interior volume of 1,400 cubic meters, the ITER vacuum vessel will provide an absolutely unique experimental arena for nuclear fusion physicists. As mentioned earlier, the volume of the plasma contained in the center of the vessel is going to be 10 times larger than that of the largest operating tokamak in the world today. So everything in the ITER project is literally dialed up to 10. Now, the ITER project is currently under construction on a 180 hectare site, with 39 buildings and technical areas housing the ITER tokamak and all its ancillary systems. Pre-assembly of the tokamak components takes place in an assembly hall first before being moved to its final destination. Other auxiliary buildings in the vicinity of the tokamak building are cooling towers, electrical installations, a control room, facilities for the management of waste, and the cryogenics plant that will provide liquid helium used within the cryostat. As it stands, the ITER team currently has 35 countries involved, including China, the 28 states of the European Union, Switzerland, India, Japan, Korea, Russia, and the United States. This ambitious project was expected to take 10 years to build. ITER had originally planned to test its first plasma in 2020 and achieve full fusion by 2023. However, with any project of this magnitude that tests the limits of physics, there will be delays. The schedule is now to conduct the first tests in 2025 and achieve a full self-sustaining fusion reaction by 2035. So what happens if it works? If the ITER experiment is successful, there are two expected results. First is the creation of burning plasma, which is one of the four fundamental states of matter, along with solid, liquid, and gas. During the experiments, if the energy of the helium nuclei produced when hydrogen isotopes are fused becomes large enough to sustain and propagate the burn without the need for external heat sources, then ITER scientists would have created burning plasma. This is the first step towards a self-sustaining nuclear fusion reaction. As the first such burning plasma device in the world, ITER will 
will offer scientists a unique opportunity to chart new territory in controlled nuclear fusion. And the second expected result of the experiments will be proof of the feasibility of tritium breeding, which is the ability to produce tritium within the vacuum vessel. You see, the supply of tritium, which is used with deuterium to fuel the fusion reactions, is insufficient to serve future power plants. ITER is specially designed to provide a unique opportunity to test in-vessel tritium breeding in a real fusion environment. If it can demonstrate this ability successfully, it will be a major step for humanity towards achieving large-scale fusion reaction plants in the future. So, a lot hangs in the balance. ITER is not designed to be a nuclear fusion power plant itself, but it is the testbed for all the future technologies and understanding required to operate one. And if you were still in two minds about the significance and the magnitude of the task ahead of the ITER scientists, maybe this analogy will help simplify it for you. They are literally trying to create a mini sun within the confines of a few buildings. So what do you guys think? Will the ITER experiment be a success? And moreover, will we see operational nuclear fusion power plants within the next decade? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button and continue watching by clicking on one of the cards on your screen. See you in the next one.